Welcome, Claire. Thank you so much for being with me here today. It's such an honor to have you. Oh, thank you so much, Tara. And let's just get straight into it. So how have you used sensitivity to work for you in your business? Ooh, well, that was a real journey for me, actually, the entire turning point of my life, not just my business, was to, to claim that that which I thought was most wrong about me, my sensitivity, was actually the guiding light for me in my work and the way I do everything. So I, I really came to a point in my life after trying to fit myself into business models for some time, where I realized that my sensitivity was a crucial barometer that if something didn't feel right, it didn't mean I didn't fit. It meant that something else was being called through, something higher, something you know, more magical was being asked for. So I stopped internalizing sensitivity as a problem and I started to use it to say, okay, if this isn't a fit for me, then what's being called for? And that changed everything to really put my sensitivity front and center of everything I did and how I interpreted everything in business also. Oh, that's amazing. But how, like, so that, that journey from knowing that it's for you and the sensitivity being a gift, how did that sort of come about? Has that been something you've always had in you or was that a journey in any way? Well, I was awake when I came in and I was a very sensitive child. And like many people listening, um, I was told I was too sensitive. And I, my soul chose to come into at a time and into a family where there wasn't anyone to support me in that journey. So I shut down for a number of years. And then it was really, I found aromatherapy, massage and meditation and yoga around the age of 19, early 20s. And that just gradually reopened my intuitive gifts. And it was a, it's been a journey ever since then of stepping more fully in and clearing what stands in the way of my pure connection and intuition and channeling abilities. Amazing, amazing, I love that. And how do you feel that we can sort of harness the power of sensitivity more in business today? Oh, I would love to see that happen. <laughs> um, the place to begin is to trust ourselves and to be really radical in our acceptance of what we're needing and the kind of ways that business can be structured around different kinds of sensitivity. And for me um, in particular, I'd be using intuition in business and and channeled guidance so the way in which i think we begin to do that is with ourselves each individual sensitive intuitive person begins to honor their needs and really deeply listen and not make themselves wrong by not trying to fit into current business models but realize that we're in this incredible evolution and ascension moment on the planet and that we are the leaders because we're the people who can catch the new solutions and can channel through in all areas of of life and existence we are the ones who are going to catch the new and the innovative and the systems and the structures and the ways of being and doing that are right for all and that honor the planet and honor the people in the animal kingdom. So I know I have a lofty aim <laughs> with that, but, but start with yourself, start with deciding from this day, don't ever make yourself wrong again for feeling like you don't fit or you can't make yourself fit into a way of doing. Trust that there's a new way, a better way. And when you're aligned and when it feels good, you're onto something. I love that. And I'd actually love you to share some of your journey, please, and how you do this in your business, because you're such an inspiration to me. And I know you really honor your sensitivity and being you know, the new way, doing things your way in a new way. So I'd love you to share some of that if you would like to, please. Yeah, thank you so much, Tara. For me, I follow my intuition 100% and that's been a journey to be able to do that because the things you have to say yes to and the things you have to say no to as a result can be quite challenging. But for me, it demands integrity and that ripples out into my business. I have to be in integrity with myself, with my gifts and my path. 
And when I do that, everything else flows and it's, it's always right for other people. So years ago, for example, when I was operating as a practitioner, I began to realize that working in the evenings, having a lot of American clients, things like that, it wasn't working for me. But I, I had a belief that only people who could afford sessions had jobs during the day and they needed to come at night. And I drew a boundary for myself that I was no longer going to work in the evenings. And because it was really right for me and I honored that, everything just magically rearranged. I told everybody what was happening. People just took time off work or I got new kinds of clients. So that was a really early step that I took to honor and trust that what was right for me was going to be right for my business. And there have been many steps since um, following the guidance, including opening a center, letting it go, selling my house, traveling the world. I've had to take some very bold moves and leaps to follow my intuition, but I have thrived and my business has thrived the more and more I come into alignment and integrity with my intuitive guidance. And of course, I'm now able to help others do the same and to hold them through these, these leaps in levels and leaps in consciousness that we're all being called to. And sensitives are just on the, at the forefront and we can truly lead the way and help others to do that. Oh, I love that. I love that. And I love how, yeah, you, you follow that, you trust it, you take the risks and you do it even when it doesn't make sense. You know, you, you, you've really changed your life completely by following your intuition. Yes. It's really yes. Hmm. It doesn't tend to work out too well if I don't listen. <laughs> that was one of the most important lessons to learn. It's actually easier when you just say, okay, this is what we're doing now <laughs> and follow it. I love that. I mean, you've covered so much, to be honest, in it. Is there anything else that you'd like to share or add that sort of brings, you know, your angle, your touch on, you know, your view on sensitivity in business and anything else you'd like to share? Yes. I think one of the things I really, really, if I could go back to myself 15 or plus years ago, starting in business uh, and throughout, I would say, I would want to say, take your time, Claire get to know yourself, don't rush this process, don't think you have to be somewhere that you're not. If things aren't opening up in the way that you're expecting, like trust that, there's something else to learn about yourself. There's something else that you're meant to bring through. You know, I went through a stage of, of investing in programs, like, and trying to get, trying to almost force my progress and, the journey for me, nothing was going to work fully for me until I deeply connected with who I am and what I'm here to do and how. And so I, I would want to go back and tell myself, don't, don't fight the process so much. Give yourself a space and honor where you are. Um, I think I was always wanting to be somewhere else. So that's the, the gift I would give myself if, of, of my experience, honor and surrender to the, the place that you're in right now and honor its many gifts. I love that so much, absolutely. We can all learn from that and I definitely relate to your story and I know many others that will and do. Thank you so much, lovely, that's amazing. You're welcome.